we've covered quite a few of uh, MPI-3 features today, but it may not be clear that it, it was uh, MPI-3. So as Rusty mentioned yesterday, MPI-3 was the next, was the, is the most recent uh, major new release of MPI. It happened uh, about three years ago now. And MPI 3.1 is the latest MPI version that was released in, in June. But between 3 and 3.1, there are very minor changes. So anything, when something in that last decimal changes, it's, it's a minor uh, release. So what's new in uh, uh, MPI 3? Uh, Non-blocking collectives, we, we saw that this morning, all the I broadcasts and I barriers and everything. Neighborhood collectives that Bill just talked about. Uh, there is an uh, improved one-sided communication interface. So one-sided communication was defined in MPI 2 itself back in uh, the late 90s, uh, but that had some drawbacks. So there were some limitations to the way it was defined. So MPI 3 has extended that and uh, added some new features. I have another slide on that to make it more usable, uh, both for applications and also as a target for higher level programming models and so forth. Um, there is a new interface for tools, and I'll, I'll talk about that for parallel tools to get more inf information from the MPI implementation. And there are uh, new bindings for Fortran 2008. So if any of you Fortran uh, users has, is using Fortran 2008, you can use these uh, new bindings, which are, they use the Fortran 2008 style, which is quite different from the, the old Fortran. And there are other uh, smaller uh, features. So one is, uh, you know, MPI has always had this function called an MPI probe. Uh, so if you are if you are a receiver and you don't know whom you are going to get a message from or whether you are going to get a message from, uh, you, you're gonna you could call an MPI probe or I probe function, and that would tell you what the incoming message is, you know, whom it is from, the number of bytes, and and so forth, and the tag. And then you could call the write receive function. Uh, if you did that in a in a multi-threaded way, uh, it could it could happen that one thread uh, detects the probe and some other th uh, thread calls a receive and, and matches that uh, message. And then when this thread goes to get that message, it's not there. So it was a thread safety issue. So there is a new uh, way of doing that, which is a uh, which is called M probe and M receive. So in the the MPI M probe returns a, a message handle, and then you have to call a receive with that handle. So then there is no thread, uh, you know, there's no race condition or a thread safety issue there. Uh, there is a non-collective communicator creation that is more useful for libraries, I would say. Uh, the C bindings have been made const correct. So for those of you who are C, uh, you know, C experts. You know, C has this notion of specifying what, some parameters as const, which means they will not get changed by the function in, uh, uh, to which they are passed. Uh, the original C bindings didn't have didn't specify that carefully, so that has been done. So you, it, you know, the compilers are happier, and it helps you also to write write code correctly. Uh, there are other few minor things that I won't say. Uh, and as I, as Rusty mentioned yesterday, the C plus plus bindings that were originally added in MPI two were were removed from MPI in uh, in MPI three. They were earlier. They were deprecated uh, in two point two. What deprecated means is that they are still there, but you are discouraged from using them. And then that, that's what MPI try, uh, does when it wants to remove something. It doesn't remove things easily. Most things remain because it doesn't want to break codes. But the first step is to deprecate, which which means to inform that this is an old function, old feature. It may go away in the future, and then it eventually goes away at some point. Uh, so you can still use MPI from C++ by calling the, the C bindings. And in fact, in MPH, we have not deleted the C++ bindings. So they're still there, except that I think the new MPI3 functions have not, the, don't have C++ bindings because the forum never defined them since it is being removed. The new functions never had a C++ binding, so we've not added them in MPH. So only the old ones, which are there, are still there. But uh, it's better not to use it because your code may not be portable if you, you know, some other MPI implementation is, may not support them anymore. And there were other, few other small functions that were previously de deprecated and they have been removed. So in terms of the uh, MPI one-sided, uh, what was added was there were a whole bunch of uh, new, new routines to create windows in addition to the basic MPI win create that was in MPI 2. So uh, there's a new function, MPI win allocate, 
the, where the MPI implementation allocates the memory uh, and, and, give, and returns it back to you instead of you passing the uh, allocated memory. And this allows uh, things like symmetric mem memory allocation and so forth. Yeah? Uh, so my question is, uh, <coughs> is the interface between uh, MPI and uh, Fortran and the interface between MPI and C very different? So, you know, it, you know, MPI has, there are some, something called language neutral bindings, and then those are represented in, in each language. So the C interface to Fortran will look familiar to C programmers. So it's the same function name, uh, but, uh, but the parameters, you know, in, in C and int is called int, and in Fortran is called integer and uh, things like that. So it's the same function name and parameter names, but the the actual interface is something that would be legal in, in C versus legal in Fortran. So it's it's the same thing, but spoken in different languages, you can say. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah, I'm considering that uh, since the Fortran and C is very different, so maybe uh, some people can do, uh, spend some time um, combining Fortran with C, because Fortran and C are more and more generally uh, used in power computing. So if we, we can unif uh, unify Fortran and C, maybe people can save more time on interface with MPI. Well, what do you mean unify Fortran and C? Well, there may be some platform that uh, both Fortran and C can be based on this platform. So. Yeah, so, so you know, MPI implementations are typically natively implemented in C and natively have a C binding. And then the Fortran interface is just a layer on top of that, which is also like a, a C binding, but it's something that the Fortran compiler can link with. So as such, there is only C with a Fortran wrapper. You have an answer, Rusty? I was wondering if perhaps what he was concerned about was the issue that we uh, addressed in MPI 2. If you uh, using um, C and Fortran together. In MPI 1, it wasn't clear that you could send a message in Fortran and receive it in C. Or if you called MPI in it in C, it was also initialized in Fortran. So there are a lot of, I would say, kind of boring MPI functions um, that we never talk about in the tutorials uh, that have to do with addressing this issue. Um, can you for, for being able to, especially for some of the objects that you get back from a function. So you have to take a C data type, what's the relationship with the corresponding Fortran data type, conversions back and forth and so forth. That's all in the standard, you can find it. It's, it's pretty nitty gritty stuff, just the sort of thing that you need if you were really doing that. But um, we usually don't talk about it in the tutorials because it's so ugly. <laughs> yes, there, there's a, Chapter on language interoperability is what it's called. How do you mix Fortran and C within the same program on one process? And also, you can communicate among processes with one could be written in Fortran, other could be in C. That, that is also works. And you, you had something. Yeah, and the one last thing is they are pretty similar, but there's some key places where they are very different. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you look at the original 3.0, uh, there was a slightly different Fortran binding in there, and that was because of an error. And the error is that logical variables, so Fortran has a logical data type, that has no counterpart in C. Right? C uses um, ints with certain values, but Fortran has a, has a Boolean logical type. And because there's no correspondence, and because you don't would be an ugly Fortran interface that didn't take advantage of that logical type. Um, it's impossible to have a single interface that works with both languages. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so as I said, win allocate allocates the memory associated with the window and returns to you. Did you have a question or are you just stretching? Yeah. Yeah, why why did y'all deprecate C plus plus one? So the the the, the folks who created the bindings in the first place realized that nobody was using them the way they were defined. I mean, they were not useful to the in the in the C plus plus. Those who were using C plus plus bindings were they were using the boost bindings, which are not official, and they are just for MPI one and so forth. And they became a ma maintenance headache for the implementations when there were not enough users. So they did a survey also to find out who who's actually using it, and there were almost nobody. So that's how it it. It uh, went through. And do you have any mo more? 
Um, I think the big thing was that they, even when they were defined, they were pretty low level C++ interface. And in the intervening years, uh, C++ had, has changed and developed and expanded uh, quite a bit. And so the, the, uh, the reality was that the MPI C++ bindings no longer gave you very much, and never gave you very much, but now it really was obvious that they didn't give you very much. Uh, there very little benefit to using them over the C bindings, which were still available to C++ users. So the, the feeling was that either there should be a much more sophisticated C++ binding, which nobody was quite sure what it would be and nobody wanted to sign up to develop, or there shouldn't be one in the way of that, and so that's why we got rid of it. Okay. Uh, the other type of uh, window creation routine is called MPI win create dynamic, which, uh, which creates a window without any memory attached to it. So you can create a window of the entire memory space and then dynamically attach different uh, you know, memory regions uh, to that window. And this is useful for you know, being a runtime to, for a PGAS language or, uh, and so forth. And you can also allocate a window of shared memory, uh, say, within a node. That is shared memory where shared memory is available. And then, uh, then access that memory directly with loads and stores. So you, if, you know, if you're running on a, on, on a big machine and you're, you have a, you know, nowadays all, me all nodes have many cores, so there is a shared memory region within a node, you could use that function to get locally shared memory and then access it directly from MPI processes on that node just by variable loads and source. You don't need to use MPI. Of course, you have to take care of the, you know, prevent any race conditions because when you're directly reading and writing to shared memory, there is a, always a risk of, uh, you know, ugly race condition in there, but that, that's something you, you have to handle. And what was missing in MPI2 RMA was also that there were no um, atomic read modify write operations. There was no fetch and add, no fetch and increment, there was no compare and swap. And these are primitives that have been shown to be useful in, in building parallel algorithms. So that was a, a, a bit of a hole that, that has been fixed. So those have been uh, also added in MPI3. Uh, there is also a, uh, a, a new memory model. So uh, the original MPI RMA assumed that uh, uh, the most general memory model that it could even be on a non-cache coherent system, uh, and th there are a few, there were a few machines like that. Uh, so because of that, you had to do a little bit of extra work in your code to to make sure that it uh, it ran everywhere. Uh, in in uh, MPI three, you can query the MPI implementation to to find out what is the memory model uh, supported. There is a new model called a unified memory model, which means typically on a cache coherent system you'll you'll get that. And in that case, there are some more simple, some more simplifications you can make. So there, there's some detail there, but it makes it, it makes it easier on the programmer to, uh, in in that case. And what what else did I? Yeah, and there are also uh, new functions, new, new versions of the put get accumulate functions that are called MPI R put and MPI R get MPI R accumulate that actually return an MPI request object. And then you can call the usual test and wait functions to check for local completion. This does not mean that the operation is completed remotely. It's just uh, to check for local completion. Uh, then there is a new tools interface, which is uh, called the MPI, uh, MPIT uh, interface, which is uh, beyond the original, uh, you know, much more than the original PMPI profiling interface of MPI, which was a very simple interface the PMPI was just a way to trap MPI functions and do your own instrumentation, and which tools find quite useful. But there was no way for a tool to f query some internal features of an MPI implementation. And that could be, what is the length of the message queue right now? Because in some codes, when they're running, uh, there is in imbalance of communication, and there are some, you know, some processes are sort of bombarded with messages and their receive queue can grow very large. And there could be 10,000 pending messages in that queue. And how, how can the tool find that out and inform the user that, hey, look at, look at this imbalance in your code? So there are features where, by which a tool can ask for some implementation-specific um, details, uh, details about the implementation that are not otherwise known. Uh, there's also a way to, to 
to change things like uh, algorithm uh, parameters. So as I said, for uh, MPI collective functions, they switch between various algorithms. If you, if you know better and you want to, wanted to switch between some algorithms at, at a specific point, the, the functionality exists by which a tool could help you to, uh, to do that. Uh, there are new Fortran 2008 bindings, as I said. And a few, the, the miscellaneous ones I, I talked about, I won't uh, go into detail. There were some things that did not make it into MPI3. Uh, one was um, any additional support for fault tolerance. Uh, so MPI does have some support for, for fault tolerance, and MPI functions return an error code, and uh, you can change, there is a default, there is an error handler associated with the MPI uh, communicator or other objects, and by default, it, uh, the error handler says abort. So if there is an error, you know, it return, you know, it'll return an error code which the imp implementation will print and it'll abort. But you can change that error handler to say errors return. So MPI will return an error code and, and it will try to stay alive. Of course, if there is a catastrophic uh, problem, it will not be able to uh, stay alive. The job might crash. But in other times, it can return to back to the application and then you can figure out what to do, whether you can do something from that point. But there has been work going on in the forum to add more features for uh, fault tolerance. You know, what happens if a process, one of the processes dies? How do you, you know, how do you recover from there? How do you find out which process has died? How do you rebuild the communicator? How, how, how do you do collective communication after that? Because now there is one less communicator, uh, one less process, and, and so forth. So that, that discussion, that proposal was not ready in time for MPI 3. It's still, it's still going on. But hopefully, in terms of uh, hopefully in MPI four, uh, uh, there will be some uh, additional support for uh, fault tolerance or resilience, as you call it. Uh, there was also a working group looking at better support for hybrid programming. Uh, so one of the things we didn't actually talk about in this tutorial, we didn't have time, is the support for multi-threading. Uh, how do you do multi-threaded programming? There might be it might be covered tomorrow a little bit in the open MP and the hybrid uh, programming. Uh, so MPI has a thread safety specification where you specify what level of thread safety you want and then the implementation, there is an MPI init thread function where you say whether you want full thread safety or only uh, lower levels, uh, lesser amounts of thread safety and then the implementation said, says yes or no and then accordingly you, you can mix threading with MPI. Uh, that's, that was there. Uh, there is a, a group looking at extending that to uh, give uh, to make, to give thre uh, MPI threads or threads uh, uh, an MPI rank in itself. So the so the problem today is that you can do multi-threaded MPI communication, that is c communication from multiple threads in the process, but they all share one rank. You know, a process has a single rank. Uh, all the threads in that process have that rank. It, it, they're not going to get separate ranks unless you do something. You know, you you do something fancy. So. This new, the, the new uh, proposal aims to uh, extend uh, MPI to have what, what, what they call multiple endpoints per process, where you can, uh, it's not just one rank, but more than one, it's called endpoints, and a thread can bind, attach itself to a, to a particular endpoint, and so it can now communicate with its own rank. And the advantage of that is internally, uh, if there is only one rank, there is like one queue because MPI has also has some message ordering rules, so the ordering has to be followed. So internally, there there, there is a queue or, uh, of messages that needs to be locked when there are multiple threads accessing that. So all that can get simplified, and the performance is potentially better if the threads are can communicate as if they are they have their own rank, you know, own rank for sending and receiving. So. The details of that are being worked out. Hopefully, that will also make it into MPI 4. MPI 4 is probably at least a year and a half away, maybe two years away, because MPI 3.1 just came out uh, in June of this year. And you can always, you can, the PDF file can be downloaded from the, uh, uh, well, this is the MPI forum meeting site, so you can track what is going on uh, in MPI, uh, in the forum for MPI 4. Uh, the, Current standards you can get from the mpiforum.org website. Yeah? So what's the problem with starting four processes on an SMP machine? And why do you need to do like launch uh, four threads instead? So the, the four, if, you, if you have uh, four processes, uh, 
four MPI processes. The MPI process is typically, uh, a process has its own memory, right? So you're sort of dividing the memory among the uh, processes. If you're running some kind of application that needs a lot of memory, then you want the whole memory for, for yourself and have the threads do the parallelism. So it's that kind of uh, trade-off is there. And it's often not just four, it gets to 64 or so. So on, on, the, on the blue gene, we can have 64 hardware threads. Um, so, you know, that, so, you could, so there's a trade-off. Do you want to have one MPI rank and 64 threads, or 16 MPI ranks and four threads each? It's not clear which, which is best. It, it's very application dependent. So some applications you do 16 times four. Some do 64 times one. They do 64 MPI ranks and one thread. Some do one MPI rank and 64 threads. So the threads, even if they have their own rank number, they are going uh, to use the same memory? Like they are going to share it? Yeah, threads in general are share memory. So threads are part of a process, and so they, can, they have access to the process memory. Whereas each process has its own memory, unless you allocate some shared memory that is shared among the process. What I don't understand, what's the advantage of like uh, I could launch one process and yeah. create the traits myself and use like the, manage the shared memory myself. Yeah. But if I give them a different wrong number, and M MPI does not, um, the idea behind it is to like for one rank to do its own job, like no no memory sharing. So. No, the, the one rank, the, the giving threads their own rank makes their communication potentially faster because then the internal MPI queues are not. Uh, serialized with thread locks and so forth. That, that's the advantage. Isn't there an instruction issue also? Like on the blue gene queue, you only issue so many instructions per clock, and so if you have more threads, then you can keep more hardware busy? Yeah, uh, he, he was asking about the giving threads their own MPI rank, what, what is the advantage in the new proposal? So that, that does it. Yeah. So uh, in today's example, it was MPI init thread yeah. instead of MPI init. So they could be used interchangeably. The example didn't have any open MP pragmas or stuff. So yeah. Uh, yes. You, so you can use MPI init thread and pass MPI single as uh, MPI thread single, which means it's a single threaded program. Uh, or you can use MPI init thread and and say you're going to use a higher level of thread safety and not use it. That that is also okay. Uh, uh, it won't do any uh, harm unless or nothing happens, right? Well, if you if you ask for MPI thread multiple, then internally the implementation will do the uh, will start doing its uh, mutexes or locks even when it's not needed. So there there can be a performance penalty to using the full thread safety version. Uh, there are some there are two or three weaker versions where it, it it's not it may not affect. Uh, that that is probably uh, it's just good practice. What is worse is in a multi-threaded code, people forget to call MPI init thread and they call MPI init. And that is a big problem because things will not even get enabled internally, and and you'll you'll have some uh, trouble. Yeah. Um, is it is it the case that in uh, loop based parallelism, when standard loop based parallelism is used and communication always happens outside of loops, then MPI init thread is unnecessary? No, you uh, you still need MPI init thread, but there is a different there is a different level of thread safe. So so MPI has what, four levels of thread safety. It is thread single, which means there is only one thread in the program. You don't even have loop level parallelism. There is uh, MPI thread funneled, which is the model you're talking about. That MPI thread funneled means there are threads, but they are doing other things. They're not calling MPI. There is only one thread calling MPI. That is like your model, like a loop. And then there is an MPI thread serialized where it's similar, but uh, it's, not, it, it, it's not one particular thread, any one thread is it's one thread, but any of those threads could do MPI, and the fourth one is fully thread multiple. So the MPI standard says you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. that. That's a common mistake that users make. So there could be some other libraries that uh, the MPI implementation needs to use the thread safe versions versus, uh, you know, versus the default version and so forth. So it needs to know whether it's operating in a threaded environment at all or, or, or not. That's surprising because last time I checked, several MPI implementations were, were extremely buggy in funneled version and, and old versions worked correctly with, uh, with, with, uh, with MPI init, not init thread, even when, when using loop-based parallelism. So there must be some implementation specific. So you're both right. 
So the, um, <laughs> the, the practical fact is that for most of the library's implementations, the, the corner cases that the standard is trying to avoid won't happen. Uh, careful, correct code should still use init thread and specify MPI um, thread funneled. Um, because that's what you really need, and that describes exactly the situation that's going on where you have uh, loop-based thread parallelism. Uh, and it's possible that a runtime implementing that could uh, want uh, system libraries that would not be what M the rest of the MPI implementation was expecting. Um, so the correct code should do exactly what Rajiv said. In practice, um, for various reasons, most of the system routines, the system libraries, are effectively thread multiple because of the needs of other parts of the user environment. And so the MPI implementation is usually safe. Um, but this again, this is like using MPI send assuming some buffering is that you will almost always get away with it. And if that's good enough, okay. But I would recommend using um, init thread with thread funnel to describe exactly what it is you need. <laughs>